Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. This month's Humble Choice selection contains 12 games, and unlike last month, several of them are actually great. Some, however, I just don't have the patience for, or they're just pretty bad. We're off the bat, I'm predicting PC Building Simulator, and probably Vampire the Masquerade is not going to be for me, and maybe not Minoria. Yeah, let's see anyway. Let's get these unlocked, uh, installed, and see how they play. First up is PC Building Simulator. I've built quite a few computers since the early 90s, so the main impression for me was one of boredom. Every IT guy and programmer knows the despair of getting roped into fixing someone else's computer, and this game lets you reenact that but without the soul-destroying time waiting for things to install, update, scan, or whatever. The free play mode lets you build computers too, and it's marketed as some kind of way to pre-build your dream PC before you actually order it. But for me it's just dull, and I honestly can't see how this takes 15 gig. Ancestors is a pretty interesting game. You start at the dawn of man and work your way through the evolutionary chain. First impressions though are that the game is quite complex and the tutorials don't really explain what you're seeing when you use the senses. Someone with more patience might get loads out of it, but for me 20 minutes was about the most I could be bothered with. What's that? A skull? Some yellow boxes. We oh broken leg. Yeah, no. Pathologic two is creepy. It looks like it's mostly set in a pre-revolution Russia or somewhere similar. At the start I wasn't quite sure what was going on but the story unfolds pretty quickly and you're soon on your way to see your father in your hometown. From there stuff gets weird. So far it's really enjoyable and a Bit of a disturbing experience, so I'll be giving it a good play this month. Artemy, I write to you after so many years apart in the hopes that you may find a way to return to us. Something worries me. I fear a difficult trial approaches. All the chat dialogues on this game aren't particularly great. was an age of lawlessness and despair. Warhammer Chaosbane is a really fun hack and slash dungeon crawler RPG. You pick a character and stab and maim your way through hordes of monsters, grabbing the loot and pocketing the cash. What's not to like? It's really fun and I'm definitely going to be putting some time into this one.
visually this game reminds me of uh, things like Diablo and Titan Quest. It's a great game, you get to do a mix of dungeon crawling and standard quests where people ask you to go into a place full of things and kill everything. I'm a big fan of the genre. Total Tank Simulator. The British Empire lasted for centuries. You, Commander, don't want to be the one to witness its demise, do you? Yep, I suck at this game. I struggled a little with the UI and working out how to place units and set targets. You get to place things kind of, but it's not that intuitive and didn't really click with me, so uh, this one goes into the bin, I'm afraid. I'm just not the target audience, but a lot of people will love this game. I really like Song of Horror. After the creepy homage to 90s classic Alone in the Dark in the intro, you're presented with a character selection screen uh, where you get to pick who to play next. Apparently each of the five episodes in the series is full of homages to things like Silent Hill and Fatal Frame. Uh, visually it looks gorgeous, the sound design's excellent and the whole thing's really atmospheric. Yeah, I'm definitely playing through this game. In a well-lit room. It's well time that this game is on the Humble Bundle choice, uh, the day that the UK leaves the European Union. You play a British-born child of foreign nationals who now finds themselves having to work as a bouncer in a dystopian landscape for enough pay to stave off deportation to a country they've never known. It's a wonderful middle finger to the worst of our right-wing politics and population with uh, gammon NPCs and moronic jobs worths everywhere. The gameplay itself though is pretty simple, you're basically a bouncer checking IDs. As you can see from the bus shelter, <laughs> there's definitely a lot of uh, funny elements. I think this is another one I'm going to put some time into this month. This isn't really a game. It's more of a fan fiction with occasional story choice points. The artwork in the background during the story seems pointless though, as you're focused on the text the whole time you're playing it. There's no game here, and it'd be much better as just an ebook. I can't see any value whatsoever in consuming a book paragraph by paragraph with delays for the backgrounds to move. And in the end, I just kind of ended up hammering my mouse just to see if there was any game tucked inside here somewhere. 
I was disappointed. Tales of the Neon Sea is another game this month that I love. It's a puzzle adventure game set in a retro art cyberpunk landscape. You even get to play the main character's cat. It's an excellent game and this could well be my favourite from this month. I like puzzles, I like adventures, I like pixel art, and I like cats. Minoria is a platformer with hack and slash combat mechanics. The art is great and overall it's not bad, but for some reason I didn't find myself getting into it. It's still a great game and really adds value to the pack this month, but it's probably something I'm not going to play. Deliveled is a classic style of puzzle game, with bouncing balls, switches, spikes and all that good stuff. This kind of game is right up my street and I'll probably be dipping in and out of this one over the next few months. And lastly we have Ambassador Fractured Timelines. This is a pixel art style action RPG and like Children of Moria from last month it's a lot of fun. Um, at first it can be kind of tough but multiple weapons and the ability to slow down time really helps make it enjoyable and a unique game. I had a lot of fun with the Children of Moria and I think I'm going to have a lot of fun playing this. So that's it for this month. There's a lot of good stuff, one or two things that aren't for me. Uh, Pathologic 2, Song of Horror, Ambassador, Not Tonight are great, and my two favourites for this month are Warhammer, Chaos Bane, and Tales of the Neon Sea. What do you think? A great month or not for you? Let me know in the comments, and if you want to see more content, feel free to like and subscribe, or dislike and comment too. All feedback is appreciated. So that's it, see you on the next one.